Kochi News in Orange News now to a top story this hour. The Central Bank of Nigeria on Thursday announced a new minimum capital requirement of 500 billion naira and 200 billion naira for commercial banks with international and national authorization. The Apex Bank further unveiled new capital base of 50 billion naira for banks with regional licenses. According to the Central Bank of Nigeria, all fresh capital requirements are to be satisfied by the 31st of March 2026. The central bank also pegged the new minimum capital for merchant banks at 50 billion naira, while non-interest banks with national or regional authorizations are mandated to raise their capital threshold to 20 billion naira and 10 billion naira, respectively. Well, Professor Uche Uwaleke is a financial economist at Nasarawa State University in Kefi, and he joins us now to examine the new capital thresholds for banks the reasons behind this new regime and exactly how it will uh, affect and impact the financial service delivery in the country and the economy. Good afternoon and welcome to Newsday. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for inviting me. Good afternoon. All right, Professor. So what is the big idea? What is the big picture here? Why is this uh, recapitalization exercise even necessary? Yes, it's, it's, it's a welcome development, absolutely, absolutely necessary. Uh, if you consider the fact that the last time it was done was in 2005. Uh, in 2005, 2004, 2005, um, the central bank saw the need to move up the capital base of banks from 2 billion to 25 billion. And um, since then, uh, there hasn't been any regulatory um, requirement, um, you know, um, um, asking banks to recapitalize. And you, you'll also agree with me that since then, a lot has happened in the financial uh, space. Uh, with respect to um, the Naira, for example, we've seen um, you know, Naira devaluation, Naira depreciation since 2005. Uh, as at 2005, the exchange rate, for example, was around 118 Naira to the dollar. Uh, today, we are talking about 1,300, 1,250 Naira to the dollar. Uh, particularly for banks that are operating internationally, those with international authorization, you will agree with me that um, that has had the effect of eroding the capital base of banks in dollar terms. And um, th these banks, of course, wouldn't be in a position to compete um, uh, internationally. So there is need to um, you know, ramp up the capital base of banks. Um, and, and because of the, the emphasis on core capital, core capital in, in line with international standards, in line with the Basel uh, three, um, you know, standards. The central bank, you know, is restricting the definition of that capital now, you know, it's, you know narrowly to just share capital uh, plus share premium with respect to existing banks. And for the banks that are going to see, uh, as will seek license after April 1st, you know, just um, uh, share capital. Now, this wasn't the situation in 2005. In 2005, the central bank at that time had allowed, you know, the entire shareholders fund to uh, constitutes the, you know, capital base. By the way, shareholders fund uh, comprises share capital, uh, share premium, and uh, reserves of banks. All of that, you know, um, are, are supposed to belong to shareholders. And these reserves can either be revenue reserves, you know, from retained earnings over the years, or of course, you know, uh, capital reserves, uh, some of which may arise from, you know, revalu revaluing your, your assets. So what the central bank is saying now is, for the purpose of this recapitalization, all we want to allow is um, uh, paid up share capital, okay? Um, and again, uh, in addition to share premium, maybe I should also mention or define it. Share premium is the difference between the power value of a share and the, um, you know, the, the, the market price of that share, the, the money that eventually the company, you know, receives. If the share price, the power value is one error and you sell it at one error 50 cover, that 50 cover is share premium. The premium and the share capital um, you know, uh, uh, the par value are all allowed for the purpose of computing the recapitalization. The central bank says that it's not going to allow additional uh, tier one capital, uh, in other words, uh, for the purpose of that, bonus issues are not allowed. You, you can't come and say because um, you want to recapitalize your issue in bonus, no. So the emphasis is on bringing in fresh capital. And I think that will go a long way to, um, you know, strengthen the financial system ensure that banks have enough capital to absorb losses. Because the whole idea behind capital is to you know, serve as buffer 
to be able to absorb um, um, you know, um, shocks uh, and absorb losses. So that's where you find that going forward, our banks are not only going to be um, you know, safer, they will also be more stable and, um, of course, um, uh, sound. I'm sure that's, that's the whole idea, you know, to have a more resilient banking system, um, again, in line with um, the one that also responds to international, um, um, you know, in line with international standards, which is also why you find this tiered, tiered um, structure. Again, in 2005, we had a uniform um, you know, minimum capital requirement, 25 billion. But this time around, central banks are adopting a risk-based a risk -based approach, which, is, which, of course, is uh, you know, very welcome, you know, a tiered uh, capital structure a capital-based requirement, you know, such that for banks, commercial banks with international, international authorization, they are uh, expected to do up to 500 you know, billion, particularly the tier one banks, the likes of Access, uh, you know, First Bank, uh, UBA, the Fugaz, if you like, b b banks. And then for the ones with national authorization, uh, the, you know, the likes of uh, Wema Bank, Sterling, uh, Keystone Bank, they are required to do 200 billion. And for regional, uh, Providus, Global, SunTrust Bank, they are required to do, um, you know, 50 billion. And of course, for commercial banks, where the coronation, uh, uh, sorry, merchant banks are there, coronation merchant bank, um, FBN Quest, they are to, uh, um, you know, do 50 billion. And for non-interest banks, we also have um, likes of Lotus, Jazz, and Taj expected to at least do up to, uh, you know, 20 billion for national and 10 billion for regional. So I think the, the categorization, the tiered structure, um, you know, um, it's very much in order, risk-based approach as opposed to what we saw in 2000 and, um, you know, 2005. All right, there seems to be some pushback on the CBN not allowing the use of retained earnings to meet the new capital threshold. Why is that? Yes, uh, you see, as we speak, if the central bank had allowed retained earnings, which, uh, of course, you know, I told you before, revenue reserves, um, over the years, a lot of, uh, uh, many of the banks you know, have acc accumulated this um, reserve, um, revenue reserves or retained earnings. Retained earnings are, you know, profits, you, uh, you know, you, you, are not, you, you didn't pay out as dividends. So now, um, if the central bank had allowed that, um, a, a number of our banks today, okay, um, you, know, you know, already have shareholders' funds in excess of 500 billion. Okay, so um, as I said, the central bank is focusing on um, injection of fresh capital, what is called core capital. And that core capital is um, paid up capital, you know, plus share premium. Again, as I said, in line with international standards, the Basel, Basel III Accord, definition of core capital. Okay, um, return earnings, um, you know, some see it, also see it as. Um, um, you know, volatile. Central bank is also after the quality of capital, because when you include revenue reserves, some of the reserves may have been um, maybe associated with um, high risk, high risk asset, for example, or speculative ventures, for example. So that uh, will have the effect of uh, diluting the quality of the capital. Okay, um, that's why the central bank, you know, is focusing on just the um, core capital component, and again, maybe also learning from experience of. Um, you know, 2005. You see, if the central bank had not done that, a bank could come up, come up to say, for example, that um, again, if central bank were, were, were allow, going to allow the entire shareholders fund, you know, um, as a basis to recapitalize. So a bank could simply revalue its assets, you know, a bank could simply uh, do bonus issues. Um, and of course, you know, these, these, these things are not bringing in a fresh capital. A bonus issue doesn't bring in fresh capital. You're simply converting part of your reserves, you know. That's why bonus issue is also called capitalization reserves. You just simply convert it and then say you have recapitalized. Meanwhile, no fresh capital has, um, you know, has come in. So that is why additional tier one capital is not allowed for this purpose. That's also why, you know, in my view, the central bank is not allowing revenue reserves. As I said, um, the quality of it, uh, you know, is something you can't speak for in terms of um, having, um, uh, you know, the kind of capital you need to absorb losses, to absorb um, shocks. Again, um, if you also notice, Central Bank has said, it should also not affect the cap your capital adequacy ratio. Central Bank's capital adequacy ratio for banks now is in the region of between 10 and 15%. Okay, of course, happily enough, most banks um, are within that threshold, you know, between 10 and, um, and 15. So even with the recapitalization, Central Bank intends to maintain that um, 
you know, that, uh, those uh, thresholds. You know. So right. what that means is that for these banks now, it's going to put them in a stronger position to finance big ticket projects. It's going to put them in a stronger position to underwrite credit. Because if your capital adequacy ratio, by the way, capital adequacy is the ratio of your capital to your risk weighted assets. Risk assets are, are loans, um, you, know, uh, you know, that banks give out. So if the capital, the numerator, which is the capital now, is increased, it also means that you also have the capacity to do, uh, you know, bigger loans, um, you know. And um, if you also look at the BOFIA, BOFIA too says you don't have to give out loans that are in excess of 20% of your shareholders fund unimpaired by losses. So by, by increasing this capital base for banks, okay, it also means that shareholders fund, you know, um, uh, size will increase because capital is a component of shareholders fund. So it puts banks generally in a position to um, perform stronger financial intermediation, you know, do uh, more loans. And of course, the economy would benefit um, ultimately, especially when we are talking about attending a $1 trillion economy, you know, within the, uh, before the end of the decade. Right. Well, we should surely hope so. Um, but we also know that there is a pushback on this 30-day notice for banks to come up with that uh, recapitalization plan, uh, which they have to share with the CBN. Some say it's a bit too short of a time period. Uh, what do you think about this? Yes, I've addressed the issue of um, uh, you know, uh, retained earnings, because I know the part of the pushback is also coming from that angle. Uh, why not allow us to also include our retained earnings, our revenue reserves? I've said central bank must, you know, must have done that based on experience, and also based on the, uh, the need to um, you know, uh, be in tune with international, international standards. Um, regarding the, um, the duration, uh, but before then, there's this other issue too. Of course, you know that there are options. The central bank has given to banks three options. The first option is you're allowed to uh, do a public offer, offer for subscription. You're also allowed to do um, rice issue. Rice issue is when you issue shares to existing shareholders. So whether it is uh, via offer for subscription or via rice issue, these are going to go through the stock market. That's another positive that this uh, you know, program is going to have. The uh, capital market, the stock market in particular, is likely to you know, get a boost. We expect to see increase in market capitalization, especially for uh, banking stocks. We saw that happen in 2005. Um, going by what we have seen, um, over two trillion naira is going to come, you know, going to be raised, um, you know, via this um, via this route. Okay, banks are also allowed under option one to do private placement, um, which necessarily doesn't involve them um, going through the um, you know, market. You identify high, high net worth individuals and you're offering your shares you know, to them. But that's the first route, which uh, in my view, a lot of banks are eventually going to embrace, uh, embrace at the end of the day. The second one is major, major an acquisition. With all these challenges, I want to believe that just a few banks will, may opt, opt for that. And then the third option is the option of downgrade. If you're unable to meet the uh, capital requirement by, the, by March 31st, 2020, 2026, of course, you, you can opt to go, if you are holding international authorization, international license, you can opt to go national. If you are national, you can opt to go um, regional. So that option is also there, the downgrade. So that's also to ensure that banks, banks don't, uh, a lot of banks don't go under uh, because you have options. Uh, there's also the option of uh, upgrade. So if you're able to do be able to raise capital that's in excess of what you already have, and you have met the next threshold. Of course, you be you would be you know you would be upgraded. Uh, yes, there is this um, uh, fear that uh, the deposit bank bank deposit base will be affected, you know, temporarily because you find people that will want to uh, take some money from banks to now um, you know buy buy shares. Of course, that is that is bound bound to you know bound to happen. But ultimately, I think. The two-year time frame is, um, you know, sufficient, but the central bank has also said it will, it will monitor it, monitor the implementation, uh, and I'm pretty sure by if by March 31st, 2006, um, uh, you know, not much progress, you know, is made, maybe the bank will reconsider. But the way it is now, I think it's, it's a sufficient time for banks to, you know, recapitalize. By the way, a number of them, even before now, especially since November, when the announcement, you know, was was made. You know, have even started on their own to recapitalize. Access Bank just announced, um, you know, a rise issue of 365 billion naira. You know, 
uh, from the market. If Access Bank is able to raise 365 billion naira, already Access Bank has about 251 billion naira in, in, you know, in terms of share capital plus share premium. So what Access Bank needs now to make up is just about $248 billion. So if billion naira, uh, I beg your pardon. So if Access Bank is able to now raise the, the 365 billion through the rights issue that they are doing, of course, um, they, are, they, are, you know, they are good to go. So a number of banks, in my, you know, uh, in my view, will be able to meet, meet up with the, the target. The same thing with First Bank. First Bank too uh, needs just about $248 billion to because uh, what it has in terms of share capital plus share premium is about $251 billion, billion naira. I keep talking about dollars. And um, Zenit Bank as well. Zenit Bank has 270, we understand, 270 billion naira uh, with respect to share capital and share premium. So it needs far less than that to be able to uh, make up. So I think the uh, targets, the bench, benchmarks, new capital base is realistic. And I think the banks won't have um, much problem meet, meeting up with that before the end of 31st March, um, you know, 2026. So the time for me is, is, um, is adequate, sufficient. Uh, the only thing I will add is that for non-interest banks, um, maybe the, the bank, uh, the CBN should consider, uh, since if you, if you look at their relative age, you know, their young age, CBN may consider maybe extended the one for non-interest banks, talking about JICE, you know, Lotus, Taj, um, and even new ones that are going to come in. Maybe they should have enough time to, um, you know, implement their own recapitalization plan. All right, this conversation has so far been at the bank, shareholders, financial analysts, economist level. What about the man on the street? How does this affect he or her, as the case may be? Yeah, the man on the street is either um, a, a depositor, is, is also either an investor, um, you know, bank customers. Bank customer is either you've deposited money or you're, you're also borrowing, going to borrow money from the bank, or you're even um, an investor. Uh, some people in the, uh, in the street too have also bought bank, um, bank shares. So for the depositors, um, I think this, this measure will have the effect of, um, um, you know, uh, providing more comfort. So depositors can now afford to go to bed and sleep with two eyes closed because banks, are, you know, the, banks now have enough capital to absorb losses. So the risk of bank failure now is further reduced, okay? Uh, with the NDIC and the central bank, the, uh, you know, the, the risk of, uh, you know, bank failure, losing your deposits in the bank uh, is, um, you know, um, far, 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 far reduced, you know, by this new, um, you know, program. So depositors' funds are more or less um, secure. That's what we'll talk about, what the measure seeking to also make banks, um, you know, safer. Uh, for investors, I, I want to believe too that uh, at the end of the day, ultimately, the share price of these banks uh, will experience um, some uh, appreciation. Today, Access Bank is uh, doing 24 naira. Um, the likes of uh, First Bank, about 35 naira. GT, uh, you know, uh, 52 naira. Uh, I, I want to believe that um, in the course of time, these share prices are likely to, uh, you know, go up further following this um, recapitalization. And of course, what that means is uh, more, more money for the investors. And um, when you recapitalize banks, banks are also in a position to use those capital to um, you know, expand. And when they expand, that should ordinarily, all other things being equal, translate also uh, to you know, better improve the bottom line. So when banks make profits, they are particularly with respect to those, these banks that have dividend history, the likes of Zenit, you know, First Bank, you know, GT, uh, they're also likely to pay dividend, more dividends. And when they pay dividends and uh, you have price appreciation, so for the investor, the investors, um, uh, you know, um, if you like, welfare, uh, you know, ultimately will, will improve. And uh, in terms of um, also uh, the, the, even the borrowers, on the part of the borrowers, okay, I also want to believe that ultimately it will, it will lead to lower costs um, of um, operations on the part of banks because this time, they are bigger, uh, leveraging economies of scale, so cuts may likely come down. And if cuts like come down, that should also reflect in the cost of loans. Uh, never mind the, um, you know, the, the aggressive uh, posture now that we have with respect to, you know, monetary policy. Now, 
the, the economy generally is likely to um, be impacted positively you know, by what has happened. And when that happens, uh, what it also means that banks will be in a position to, you know, um, uh, if, you, if you like, bore growth in the economy. And this economy today uh, needs to, to, to grow. And banks are in a strong position to also help the economy, you know, uh, grow. And when the economy grows, and when you have inclusive growth for, uh, in particular, um, of course that should, uh, um, you know, benefit um, the, the, man, the man on the street. So it's one program that is meant to uh, bring about um, um, improved welfare, uh, you know, if properly uh, implemented for the man on the street. Remember, the, the government is talking about $1 trillion economy. We can't have that with weak banks. Banks should be able to finance big ticket, big ticket projects. And it's only big ticket projects, you know, that actually help to um, uh, develop and impact positively on the lives of the average Nigerian. But I, let me also add, if, if, you, if you permit, uh, this is a suggestion now to the central bank. Uh, you see, the idea of uh, having uh, tiered um, capital, capital now um, is fantastic. Maybe the central bank should also be thinking along, this, along, the, along the line of also having tiered um, uh, cash reserve requirements. Right now, cash reserve requirement for banks, for commercial banks, is 45%. For merchant banks, uh, recently they increased it from 10% to, to, uh, to 14%. So my suggestion is, for commercial banks, Okay, is it possible to also have a tiered capital CRR structure such that the uh, uh, CRR for tier one banks or those with international authorization will also be different from the ones with uh, uh, national and regional? Okay, uh, such that you don't have a flat rate of 45% uh, for, all, for all commercial banks. I think that will go a long way, um, at least helping the, uh, the, the, if you like, the smaller banks to also um, aspire to grow, to become uh, bigger, when you allow them a lot more funds, you know, uh, to, to play with. Well, uh, Professor Uche Waleke, it was great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for dissecting all of those issues uh, for us uh, here on Newsday.